Hello, I am Bob Dickinson of Innovise. You're looking at a PowerPoint slideshow of InfoSewer and H2O Map Sewer, which are Innovise pro products for sewer design and, few, and sewer, sewer um, simulation. InfoSewer is our ARC map interface. H2O Map Sewer is our map info interface. They were both built in the early uh, 2000s based on H2O Maps uh, water and info water. So they have a lot of the features that are in Info water and info swim. So we're going to look at basically the engine. So the engine is is exactly the same in info sewer and H2O map sewer. What's different is the interface. So we'll just concentrate on the engine differences or engine similarities. Here's a little table of contents. We we'll talk about the hydraulic elements, nodes. Loading manholes, the advanced force main solution, which is a brand new as of two years ago. Um, EPS solution for info sewer, which allows you to do better force main um, simulations. And then talk a little bit about the um, input and output and the simulation options in info sewer and in H2 map sewer. There's three solutions in, in info sewer and H2 map sewer. There's a steady state, which a lot of people like, which basically gives you the steady state sort of snapshot of what's going on in your in your sewer system. It has the advantage of having both loading and peaking factor loads. So you have unpeakable loads and peaking factor loads. And peaking factors can be a function of population or a peaking factor point load equation like um, like Babbitt or Harmon. So pretty powerful. And then EPS is the simulation you use for running 24 hours, one week, or longer simulations. Hydraulic elements, uh, there's, there's four types of nodes. You have loading manholes, where the flow goes in. Chamber manholes, which are pressure nodes or, or brake nodes for force mains. Wet wells, which are storage nodes that connect to pumps. Then outfalls, where you can set a, a um, HDL um, boundary condition. Then our links are gravity mains, which use Manning's equation, force mains, which use Hayes and Williams, and then pumps. We have three types of pumps. One's a constant pump, one's um, a two-point pump, and the other is a three-point pump. So we'll talk a little bit about the pumps. So the purple are the pumps. Uh, blue, in this case, is a gravity main. Force mains are here. Force mains are the light blue. The rules in info sewer are pretty simple. You have a, a wet well connects to a pump, connects to a chamber manhole, connects to a force main, and it ends up in a loading manhole. You can't have force mains go to outfalls. You always have to have a gravity gravity um, main connected to the outfall. Okay, continuing, we have, um, again, our nodes and links. Um, a little bit uh, different view, but there's strict rules inside of um, info sewer and H2O map sewer. You, you, you cannot run the model with a chamber node connected to a in between two um, gravity mains. You can't put a loading manhole between two force mains. So particular rules and particular um, configurations are, are allowed and are disallowed. One of, one of the things we added the advanced force main solution for was to allow um, joining uh, force mains together. So, for example, these two force mains joining together with this loading manual 22 are disallowed in the steady steady state solution of info sewer and disallowed if you're not using the advanced force main solution. The advanced force main solution allows you to do iterations. Here's our nodes. And the nodes are basically, you can change the nodes in the um, in the, in, the, in the attribute browser between loading, chamber, and outlet. Here's a little bit about what it does, what nodes do. Loading manholes, that's where you put in the, the point flows or the coverage flow. It has up to 10 different loads that you can do, that you put in there, in addition to um, another database table with other flows. Uh, the data that you need for a, for a manhole is pretty simple. You just need a diameter and a rim elevation. It will calculate what the invert of the, of the manhole is from the connecting links. So pretty simple as far as the data structure. Diameter, rim, of ele rim elevation, loading if there is any, and then 
some kind of loss coefficient. You can do normally we just use zero. Links or gravity main or force main. Um, you're, they're all normally circular pipes unless you change, you give it um, an option to change it to um, rectangular. And your options really are Manning's end for gravity main and Hayes and Williams for force mains. Advanced force main solution is um, allows you to have more than one upstream and downstream force main links. You can have bifurcating force mains or you can have combining force mains. So you need to use that option to use sort of more typical force main solutions. And you can't use this in a steady state solution. So you're restricted to only having one upstream and one downstream force main link in the steady flow solution. <clears throat> That's before 2001 and after 2001. A little bit more about that. Here's uh, what the health file says about the advanced force main solution. I, I find it as a very flexible and very nice solution. You give some pretty good answers out of using the advanced force main solution. So I recommend that most of our users use the advanced force main solution. Here's another example of how, of how it's used. Um, you can have multiple upstream and downstream um, force mains where you could not use that with an advanced, without the for advanced force main solution. Um, you're still restricted, however, to only having one pump connect to the force main system. So you can't have, can't have multiple pumps feeding into, into this. Info sewer is a modified um, Muskingum Kunch solution. It basically uses two iterations. The first iteration sort of estimates what's happening or calculate what's happening in the pipes and links based on the loading. So it'll calculate what the depth is, what the flow is in the in the in the pipes, and that that's called the first um, first pass. The second pass is it adjusts what's found in the first pass based on backwater effects, pressure. Um, and other things that happen downstream. And it, it then um, tells you what that adjustment was in the um, adjusted depth and adjusted velocity. So sometimes there's a little bit of confusion. The adjusted graph shows the length of the, of the D over D and not the adjusted depth. So when you're looking at the, uh, the, uh, the, the link HDL, you need to look at also the reports for the adjusted depth to make sure that um, you're seeing what is actually being used on the second pass. Here's the um, InfoSewer itera Info iteration uh, sequence. Here's the InfoSewer iteration sequence. Um, you, could just, you can just read this, but basically it's two pass and it gives you both, both adjusted and um, non-adjusted depth and velocity. In the attribute browser, if you're using steady, steady flow or steady state, it'll tell you what the water depth was, the critical depth, the adjusted depth, whether it was backwater, yes in this case, etc. So it tells you what, what the second pass ultimate solution was. And then you can use this information to make, um, to use the relate. So you look over here in the attribute browser, you make a relate. You then make a database query, and then you, then you use the domain on the database, database query, and that will show you in red those pipes where the adjusted depth or the adjusted velocity is different than the depth and uh, velocity on the first pass. Mass balance is newer to InfoSewer post-2011. It basically tells you what the initial wet well f uh, volume was in flow plus storage plus storm flow and it gives you a, ba a balance based on that compared to the output the final storage and whether there's any um, gravity main or flooding or overflow in your system. Okay the mass balance applies only to EPS not to uh, steady state. Simulation options um, sometimes people ask well does info sewer or H2 map sewer do attenuation? Yes, it does attenuation, and the attenuation it does is based on the number of pipe segments. 
So inflow sewer divides the uh, pipes up into a number of segments, and those can be um, user-defined. Usually they're at least 10 feet um, or one second um, apart from each other. But if you're having difficulties with continuity, you can, you can adjust that or perhaps use the um, flow attenuation so it w works more as a diffusion wave solution. So these options are used to uh, attenuate the flow. So inflow sewer does have attenuation. And that attenuation is governed by these, these options. Here's an example. I have this on the Univise blog. It shows you the effect of um, adjusting the, the, the minimum travel distance. It attenuates the flow differently. So here's your various options for controlling um, continuity in info sewer. Parameter check. In the newer uh, info sewer after 2012, we use a minimum uh, report report step of five minutes. So every model is really run at five five minutes. Though you have the option of just showing it at 60 minutes. Uh, the reason we did that was to have consistent um, answers. So obviously, if you the longer you run it, the the uh, or the longer the time step you you look at, the more um, attenuation or other effects you're going to have. So it's a lot better now after 2012, and, but you can still control what you see by controlling the report time step. If you have a very big model, you might want to, look, to make this 60 minutes or 30 minutes so that you um, don't make such a big um, output file. Here's report time step of 60 seconds or 60 minutes for um, this. Um, you can see it's um, an 8.8% continuity error. We lower it down to 30 minutes, and it goes down to less than um, less than 1%. So you can control that a little bit by controlling that. And here's five minutes. Here's flow attenuation. Back here a little bit. So here's the options. You you can you can change the uh, maximum number of segments, the minimum travel distance flow attenuation, whether using the advanced force main solution. This is sort of how you determine what uh, sort of travel distance you have. You can look at the, the lengths of the, um, the... Okay, this contrasts the InfoSewer and InfoSwim nodes. Um, InfoSewer, as I mentioned, has loading, chamber, wet well outlets. InfoSwim has storage, dividers, junctions, and outfalls. You can directly import InfoSewer or H2O Map Sewer to InfoSwim or H2O Map Swim. The nodes, links, and dry weather flow, and other and, and things like the pumps and other things come in, in very nicely. Um, import if you go from InfoSwim or H2O Map Swim back to InfoSewer, however, you have to go by the import and export CSV file. So it use the import and export uh, manager. So this is a brief introduction to InfoSewer and H2O Map Sewer. I hope you enjoyed it and, and I hope you learned some things about the rules for, for modeling in InfoSewer and H2O Map Sewer. This has been Bob Dickens of Innovice and again thank you for